Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Looks like it's time for liftoff in AMD. You're watching it right here. 93, this is uh, a good five-month high. Uh, beautiful to see. You know, I was telling you to buy this thing at 75 in March, and you got another big chance in May. You know, went came down here and made this strong bottom test in the 72, 73 area. You, you had to be a buyer there. Um, and, the the you know, it just started to move, right? You had, oh, look at this beautiful bull flag consolidation you had here. Um, then another big thrust. I forgot what the news was. Oh, this was, this day, June 17th, was uh, Google Cloud goes with AMD uh, hyperscale chips for the data center. Uh, so that was that day, lift, lifted us out of there. And then the past two days, let's see, yesterday, June 29th, um, UK regulators give the thumbs up. They're not going to, they're not calling for a second, you know, examination of uh, antitrust. Uh, and so the purchase of Xilinx is good to go. Uh, and then just more follow through here. I think, uh, I think Intel delayed another uh, new uh, chip family. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, here it is here. Intel delays Sapphire. And Sapphire, remember, the reason that AMD, you know, has been doing so well is because, um, as I talked about last fall, when AMD roared above 90, was that Intel was just slow to develop sub-10 nanometer architecture uh, for PCs, notebooks, laptops, uh, and now another delay with the with, with Sapphire's the code name for their next generation Xena, Xeon server, and this is uh, but you know it's this is only a ten nanometer process anyway. It's all good for it's all good for AMD. All right, so last week I did AI dreams and reality, investing in advanced technology. Go back and watch that video or read the article. A lot of good stuff in there. One of the key things I emphasized was not just being an NVIDIA investor, but going to the NVIDIA newsroom at least once a week just to catch up. So I did this on June 23rd. You would not believe the news flow out of the NVIDIA newsroom since June 23rd, last Wednesday. Let's take a look. How about this on June 25th? Buckle up for the industrial HPC revolution. HPC, of course, is a hyperscale or high-performance computing. That's that's what it is, high performance computing, uh, but but hyperscale gets thrown in there. I love this quote from uh, from Jensen. I mean, he must have approved this, um, saying that HPC is forming a digital flywheel that's propelling not just exponential advances, but super exponential advances. I love that. You know, people sometimes think that I exaggerate when I talk about ex exponential technology curves. You know, following all the thesis of Peter Diamandis, but um, it happens because of the convergence, and that's what uh, Jensen talks about in this address. And um, right here, look at there. So they're talking about the the domino effect delivers super exponential growth. Well, what do they mean? They say it's simple arithmetic. HPC plus accelerated computing plus deep learning. Now, HPC and accelerated computing almost sounds redundant, but uh, you get what they mean. And you listen, you can't you can't fault Jensen and his top team of engineers for anything because they get everything right. But you know, so it's this it's this convergence that creates exponential results. And uh, they've got this cool slideshow I'm going to show you here, real quick. They had a they're uh, they're doing an event in Europe. Europe is. Uh, I forget, what, I forget what it's called, the ISC, maybe the International Supercomputing Conference. The, uh, they're presenting there. I watched something on Monday, and these were some of the slides. So this is looking at, you know, industrial HPC in uh, in healthcare, in molecular dynamics. Uh, some pretty cool stuff there. Let's see what else did they show here. I mean, just let's look at all the applications. I, I love the scientific applications for um, uh, hyperscale computing. You know, especially in healthcare, genomics, molecular dynamics, but you know, think about astronomy, medical imaging, uh, AR and VR, obviously. 
this is this is kind of a cool graphic. You can't see all the companies, but you know, this is they're they're talking about creating a computing ecosystem, and, and it's happening bit by bit. And you know that's why this is why uh, Jensen wanted to buy ARM because he saw that their CPU infrastructure was was critical to what NVIDIA wanted to build next. And, and they obviously see that as a wide open market. Here's the server shipments by CPU architecture. Intel owns the thing, x86, um, and ARM is just getting in there. And NVIDIA is already becoming a, a, a sort of a, a blue chip provider in the data center. So they can't wait to get in there and do more. More stuff about drug discovery using, you know, because when, when you're looking at protein folding, for instance, you're talking about, um, you know, billions of calculations per second uh, and, and trillions of parameters that need to be modeled, uh, si like simultaneously. You know, they talk about how many billion atoms can we model for, uh, you know, 500 milliseconds. Just uh, amazing stuff. So uh, what else is going on? So... So this is cool. This is uh, now we now let's talk about the edge. So on Monday, June twenty eighth, Nvidia and Google Cloud announced the first AI on five G innovation lab. Okay, now this is something I've been talking about for a while. That when you bring when you when you bring five G into the picture, then you can start doing AI everywhere, especially at the edge. Um, I searched. I did a, a search on the page here for the word edge. It comes up 13 times. A couple are redundant, but this is what they're talking about. Computing at the edge where sometimes you don't have a, you don't always have a live internet connection or you don't have access to the cloud. Well, 5G is going to make that possible and take, it's going to be able to take the cloud to every robot everywhere or every, every laptop everywhere. So you can do high performance computing at the edges of the internet. Uh, in a device or application, uh, so this is this is really cool stuff, and it's cool to see uh, Nvidia and Google partnering there. What else did I want to show you here? Speaking of the edge, here's how uh, Nvidia will do it more with ARM. This is from June 28th, also from Monday. This article: High performance computing is turning to ARM in its quest to define the next big leap in capabilities. And so last week we talked about the exascale. Well, let's see, here were my slides from last week. Uh, oh yeah, I showed you that. You gotta go back and watch the video because I showed a really cool, short, three minute, one of the best examples I've ever seen in video of how machine learning works. And it's only three minutes long. It's from uh, Simple Learn. Um, and I show you that and I, I recommend you go, you find their YouTube page. Uh, but what else was interesting here? Let me uh, scroll down. Volta card. You know, last week I talked about uh, NVIDIA, you know, AI infrastructure for enterprises. A couple of good uh, news releases there. So what is an exaflop? It's one quintillion, 18 zeros. You know, and this is floating point operations per second. A flop is floating point operations per second. It's, it's a thousand petaflops. Before, when we talked about hyperscale computing, we only talked about stuff in petaflops. And now... Um, NVIDIA is helping build supercomputers for, for Tesla, for uh, Fujitsu, uh, for a, um, uh, a university in the UK that can calculate on the exascale, the exaflop scale. Yeah, here's another look at it. All right. Now, and we're not even talking about quantum computing. You probably heard about quantum computing. Um, then this is, this is like science fiction almost. If you, even for engineers, I think it's just mind blowing that you're you know there's this company called Rigetti, and they were featured in Peter Diamandis' last book, uh, "The Future Is Faster Than You Think." Uh, well, Rigetti was already cutting edge in 2016, and now they're saying they have a brand new approach to building quantum processors. I don't even know what that's about because uh, quantum computing is is so hard to wrap your head around anyway. Uh, to think that uh, things could be in a in a dual state um, is, is anyway. So I'm going to read this article. Just came out this after, this morning, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that next week. 
All right, here's something cool. This is uh, looking at uh, AMD's uh, Ryzen chip. A little video they put at the top of their Twitter feed. Uh, watch this here while I while I talk about them. Uh, you know, AMD is. I, I've said to people, listen, if you're already full to the gills of Nvidia and you don't want to buy any more at six hundred or seven hundred, uh, now it's eight hundred dollars. Then you buy AMD at eighty bucks because it's going to go to a hundred this year. Well, in about uh, in about a week, we've gone from 80 to 93. So uh, we're on the move, and I think more people will join. AMD could be trading 110 uh, by you know first quarter next year. So this is a look at the the advanced technology of their high performance um, computing data center chips. Oh, I mentioned Nvidia is uh, building help build a supercomputer in the UK. Uh, it's called Cambridge One the UK's fastest supercomputer. And put this on your calendar. On July 7th, they're going to do a presentation. So this is de- this this uh, supercomputer is designed to solve pressing medical challenges. Um, and so they're going to have some kind of presentation on July 7th uh, at 6 a.m. Pacific. So that's that. Uh, you always learn a ton from, from any NVIDIA presentations, especially if Jensen's talking. <laughs> um, all right, what else did I want to show you here? Oh, here's another look at, so this is also from Monday, June 28th, um, you know, medical, not medical imaging, but uh, um, uh, medical modeling, basically, with with HPC, you know, and so here's a, uh, uh, you know, an image of, uh, a synthetic image of, you know, molecules or protein folding, and just the amazing stuff that could be done there. All right, what else did I want to show you here? Um, the AI, AI and 5G opportunity. Like, like, how are we going to invest in what NVIDIA is doing with uh, molecular, you know, genomics? You know, I don't know. But I do know how we can invest in what NVIDIA is doing with AI and 5G. And, uh, and one way I'm doing that is by owning both AMD and Qualcomm and some other smaller companies. Uh, that I think have a chance to to participate in this this super build out of all this technology. Let's take a look at AMD one more time. Trying to hold on to 93. Um, you know, could easily pull back to 90. I'd be a buyer 88, 90. You know, if you want to add to your position or start a new one, you could start a new position 88, 90 uh, if you get that chance. All right, I think that's all I wanted to show you today. Let me just double check here. Oh, here's a, <laughs> this could be another delay for Intel. Um, in the Alder Lake is the uh, the code name for their upcoming 12th generation Intel Core processors based on a hybrid architecture utilizing Golden Cove high performance cores and Gracemont power saving cores. Anyway, this may this is you know maybe this was expected in Q4 or or, or Q1 of 22. Um, they're they're talking about possible delays here too. So, just another way that that Nvidia and AMD uh, are are outpacing uh, Intel, who still has excellent technology. Um, you know, it could just be design bottlenecks or fabrication bottlenecks for them. All right, thanks for joining me in the kitchen, and we will talk to you next week.